Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stop saying. I'm feeling sexy and free. <laughs> No, I actually feel really good today. Hello, everybody. We're here. We're back. We're doing an update on how the whole emotionally unavailable thing is going, what that's looking like, some reflections, some things we've been thinking about. If you haven't watched my other two videos on this, you can still watch this one. I'm going to talk more about some like new reflections and learnings that I've had over the last couple months. Um, but if you want to go like deeper into like the full timeline of this. You're going to want to watch the other two videos first. I'm not really going to get into a full recap, but for the sake of those of you that are new, um, here's a brief recap. <laughs> so basically I took a pause from uh, being an active participant in my dating life, I guess. I was someone who was always on the apps, always talking to people, putting myself out there. I was leaving the dating game feeling more drained then I was feeling like fulfilled by these interactions and that's like not good. <laughs> I just started feeling like I really had a full fucking cup. My glass was full. I was feeling great. I had so much to give. I felt like I was being so open and vulnerable and I felt really ready to like really pour that into someone and make that connection with someone. But um, that just like wasn't happening. And instead I was like pouring all this goodness from myself into people that just were not giving me back the equivalent and I was leaving just feeling fucking drained because that's what happens. I felt like the universe was just telling me that I had other things to focus on and that like despite feeling very ready and eager to be vulnerable with another person like that that it just wasn't the right time and that I needed to focus on other things. That's when I decided that my new year's resolution was going to be that I was gonna be emotionally unavailable for this entire year. And let me be clear here that when I say emotionally unavailable for an entire year, that doesn't mean that I'm like barred from dating. <laughs> like nobody's enforcing this besides me, obviously. So like, it's not like I'm being held at gunpoint. Like, don't you dare. Don't you fucking dare even look at a man. Like I'm, it's not that serious. <laughs> it's not necessarily a ban on dating. I'm just not prioritizing it. I'm not actively dating. I'm not on dating apps. If the perfect situation came up, I wouldn't say no to it just because I've committed to this fucking New Year's resolution. Can you imagine? That would be such a fucking idiot move on my part. I've been reading Daring Greatly by Brene Brown and that has, kickstarted a lot of these reflections. So the first thing I've been thinking about a lot has just been like sort of reckoning with my insecurity, especially when it comes to being vulnerable. In Daring Greatly, Brene Brown talks a lot about shame. And I don't know that I had really considered how much shame I had been carrying with me from previous situationships, whatever and whatnot. I think pretty much everyone at some point in our lives has in reaction to something that has happened to us, blamed ourselves for it, even if it's not really our fault. And then you end up carrying shame with you from that, from blaming yourself for it. And as I'm reading through the Brene Brown book and getting through the sections on shame, I was sort of reflecting and considering how shame has impacted me in my relationships and sort of how that sometimes can make me feel uh, more insecure than I typically would. I think that I am a pretty secure person in pretty much all of my relationships. I am not someone who feels insecure very frequently, but I do feel like the moments in my life where I have started to doubt myself, um, they're in situations that are totally connected to the things that I carry shame for, about, with. Like I think most of us, if not all of us, struggle with some sort of like trust issues or like lingering insecurities from past relationships, friendships, whatever. Like you go through things in your life, you meet people that are shitty to you, you carry that with you, you work through it in future relationships. Like it's just part of life, right? And I'm no exception to that. There have been moments in my past that maybe in the moment, I somebody did something to me that really fucking hurt me and fucked with my head and I laughed it off. 
and I made some jokes on the internet and I went about my life and I didn't realize how much it actually deeply fucked with my head until like now. <laughs> like I knew that it bothered me, but I don't think I realized like how it impacted the way I speak to myself and maybe the way that I react to new situations because I was carrying shame with me that I didn't even realize that I had. But I think that sometimes I have an instinct to run in situations where I feel like I'm about to be hurt. And maybe I am about to be hurt. Like that's part of life. Sometimes things don't go the way you want them to. You can't protect yourself from every single hurt that you experience in life. And you would actually be a dumbass to try to do that because so much of experiencing hurt and letting yourself be vulnerable and like open and just experiencing and letting it hit you, um, that's how you grow. I hate it, but it's true. But I feel like sometimes to avoid having to experience that like naked vulnerability of like experiencing pain or experiencing rejection, I start to sort of run and pretend that I don't give a fuck or um, that it's not that deep to me because I know that if they hurt me, that I'll blame myself for it. But I think that realization of realizing that I tend to blame myself for the ways that other people have mistreated me. And when I start to fear that that might happen again, I sometimes can run or pull back or like, that'll be the moment where I turn to my best friend and I go, yeah, fuck it, I'm over it. I, I'm just like, we're done with this. Like, fuck that, fuck this, I don't deserve this. Instead of like confronting it head on and being vulnerable and like experiencing the pain, just like being a fuck it, I don't care. That's like my instinct to want to do that when I start to feel that fear. And it's because of the shame that I carry with me. Wild realization. Thank you, Brene Brown, for that. <laughs> so that's something that I'm actively working on. I know that I need to stop blaming myself for uh, the wrongs of other people, <laughs> the ways that other people have mistreated me or like, that's not my fault. I can't take responsibility for other people's actions and like blame myself for them. It's just not nice. It's just not nice, Maddie, okay? You're beautiful and sexy. You don't deserve that. <laughs> Because I think that when you start to close yourself off to avoid feeling hurt, you also close yourself off to all of the good emotions that come with being vulnerable. The only way that you get to experience the emotional intimacy and closeness that you crave with other people is by being vulnerable and having those scary conversations, by saying how you feel, by putting it all out there and saying, how do you feel? What do you think? And inviting that conversation rather than being like, fuck it, I don't care. <laughs> That's not cute. It's not productive. And it's something that I've absolutely done in the past. And I'm sure in the future at some point, my instinct will be to do that. But I also think that I'm someone who I crave that emotional intimacy and closeness so much. And I'm I'm not someone who finds it particularly difficult to be vulnerable. So it's not even that it's hard for me to be vulnerable or difficult for me to take that step necessarily. It's just that I'm so fearful of being hurt that sometimes I just take the easy route. You can't protect yourself from hurt by closing yourself off. You just end up blocking out the good too. And that is a fucking fact. Forgiveness has been a major theme in my life over the last two years. It was my guiding word in 2020. Um, and I think I, I have some forgiving of myself to do, to be honest. I, I blame myself for the times I've been hurt in the past because I look back at it and think, God, how could you not have seen that? How could you not have known that they were the type of person that was gonna treat you like that? You're smarter than that. You know better than that. I hold myself to such a high standard that when I don't spot the flaws of other people soon enough, if I don't spot the ways that somebody else might mistreat me soon enough, then it's like my fault for being such an idiot, which doesn't make any sense. I know it doesn't make any sense, but in the moment, I'm like, God damn it, Maddie, how could you let this person come close to you? How could you do that? And like, I have to sit back and break it down and be like, Maddie, 
would you talk to a friend like this? And the answer is always no. The answer is always, I would never fucking say that to anyone that I care about because it's wrong. So I think I need to forgive myself for not knowing, for not being able to predict if someone was gonna be bad to me. Like I, I need to forgive myself for that or else I will continue to fear being hurt. And fearing being hurt isn't productive, you know? So anyways, that's been a big takeaway and reflection that I've had. Um, I've also, moving on to sort of another thing that I've been thinking about. I feel like I've talked about this so many times because it's something that I'm constantly thinking about, which I think is good. Um, But just getting really clear on what it is that I want and that I need from a partner. And, put this part in bold, not fearing being too much or feeling like I'm too much and sort of suppressing the things that I want and need from a partner out of fear of being perceived as too much. I've thought a lot about like communication styles and consistency and communication and sort of what my baseline would be in order to feel secure in a relationship. And I think a lot of women in particular, are taught that their emotions make them too much or that what you're asking from your partner is too much when really, in most cases, I think it's usually like the bare fucking minimum. (laughs) But we've been taught to fear being perceived as too much or too emotional, too vulnerable. Um, When in reality, you're not being too much of anything. You're just being open and vulnerable which is what you need to be doing in order to be in a successful relationship. So, (laughs) I've thought a lot about like actually asking for what you want and how scary that can feel, especially in like a new relationship. It's just a nerve wracking thing to be so out in the open about what you want and what you need in order to feel good in a relationship. It's vulnerable and it's so beautiful and so wonderful, um, but it's scary. And that's kind of why it's great. And I've had this conversation with my best friend Ashley before, and it was something that was sort of reinforced in uh, Daring Greatly by Brene Brown, but it's the idea that like, you can't say the wrong thing to the right person. And I love that. If you're with the right person, someone who gives a fuck about you and wants to make something work, Like saying what you want and being open and out there with your emotions and how you feel is only gonna bring you closer. Like if they're the right person for you, they will have a good reaction to you being vulnerable like that. And if they have a bad reaction, then they're not the right person for you. I feel like I, in a way, have been like learning how to feel safe being vulnerable again. And this is connected to like the fear and shame that I was talking about earlier. If you are seeing someone who is a good person, who is gonna be the right person for you and you look at them and you say, hey, I think you're fantastic. I'm really enjoying spending time with you. Um, And I just feel like I need a little bit more communication and consistency from the people that I'm intimate with. Um, How do you feel? about that where are you at right now if you're with the right person they're gonna be so receptive to that they're gonna react fantastically to something like that and it's just gonna open up a dialogue that ends up bringing you closer in order to experience the emotional intimacy that you crave you have to open up these vulnerable scary conversations and say how the fuck you feel And don't feel scared about being perceived as too much or too emotional or too whatever. Like you need to be open and vulnerable about what works for you and what doesn't work for you in order to be in a successful relationship. Are there outliers to this? Yes, obviously some people can have like really unrealistic expectations for what their partner should be or like how that person should live up. But you know, I'm speaking about myself and I'm speaking generally here. Like in most cases, what you're asking for is not too much. It's like the basic emotional intimacy and closeness that you would need in order to be in a successful relationship with somebody. And like also another thing that my best friend has said to me a lot, she's a brilliant woman. Everybody needs an Ashley Olofsson in their life. But she has said to me a lot that it's like, there's no such thing as being too much. It just means that that person's not the right match for you. And listen, with the wrong person, I totally would be too much for them. 
if I was dating the wrong person and I looked at them and said, hey, I really need a little bit more communication and consistency from you. Like, what are you able to give right now? And they said, yeah, fuck no. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I can't do any more. Um, then we're just not a good match. And that doesn't mean that I'm too much because they're not willing to give me that. It just means that we're not compatible, at least not at that moment. And that's okay. And it doesn't mean that you're like wrong for that. It's, it's just who you are. It's what you need. And if they can't satisfy that need, then like that's, that's where it ends. And that's okay. Like sometimes I think we fear rejection so much that we forget that rejection is like a natural part of this process to weed out the people that aren't right for you. If you never experience rejection and you never experience things that aren't right, either you're the luckiest motherfucker on the face of the earth or you're lying to yourself. <laughs> Not everyone you meet is gonna work. Like it's really fucking hard to meet the right person. <laughs> You've got all these things that you're looking for. They've got all these things that they're looking for. All right, maybe you align on those things, but it's like, how do you align on communication? What are you looking for out of a relationship right now? What are you willing to give? What is your schedule like? Like, there's so much that has to work in order to be in a good, successful relationship. Like, of course, most things don't work. It would be fucking crazy if most things did work. So I just feel like we sometimes run away from rejection when in reality, like rejection is such a necessary part of dating and finding the right person for you. Like some people don't want to find the right person. They just want to find a person to fill the void, to avoid being alone. But that's not me. And I would never want to be that. So I have to be comfortable with rejection because that's part of the process. You're not asking for too much just because someone isn't able to give you what you need. It just means that you're not a good fit for each other and someone else is gonna be able to give you what you need and it will be a good match. And you just haven't met him yet. See, this is why I've been feeling so like romantic and dreamy this summer because I just feel like so eager to be vulnerable with someone and like see like, is this something? Is it not? I like miss the like, ooh, what's it gonna be? And I feel like because I've had so many reflections and like deep thoughts on like rejection and shame and fear and vulnerability, like I just feel so excited to like be in the stage of not knowing and figuring that out with someone and like getting to be vulnerable with someone again. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> I just feel like so connected to my vulnerable side right now. Like seriously, so much fucking good has come out of this. Yes, so much good in my life from focusing on myself, but like emotionally so much. Really focusing on digging deep and having difficult conversations with myself and with my friends. And I'm just excited for like, what else? Like I have these conversations with my friends and with myself and it like gets me excited about living. Like I'm like, oh, isn't this so fucking beautiful to feel all of this shit so fucking deeply and to get to experience other people like that and be vulnerable with people and like, it's just so fucking special. And it makes me so excited to like live more. What's meant for me will be mine. I put in the order, I placed it and it's in the mail and it's coming. And I don't know when it's coming, but it's gonna come someday and it's gonna be the best fucking love ever baby. Someday someone is gonna cherish and love the shit out of me. And I, in return, as a thank you, will fuck the shit out of them every night. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know this is a serious video. <laughs> I'm just, I'm happy. <laughs> My cup feels really full right now. I feel like I'm just very content with where I'm at and how I feel and where life is going. And I just feel very trusting that the universe has my back and that what's meant for me is coming for me. And we'll just, we'll see. We'll see what happens. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna do another emotionally unavailable update before the end of the year. It might just sort of be like the ending video to this chapter where I do like a big 
reflection video and I'm actually thinking about booking a solo trip somewhere and having that be like the finale to this year. I don't know, it could be fun. I'm thinking about it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Be sure to follow me on Instagram because I'm dumb sexy. I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next video. Bye.